This festive season, I automated my WhatsApp chats. Hi, I'm Aditi and in this video, we will learn how to automate your own WhatsApp chats on Android. Uh, you can use it for a lot of fun uh, ethical reasons. Uh, one common uh, way I use it is basically reminding my friends. So once it happened that my friend said, hey, remind me that I have to write this essay tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then I click that, hey, I can just automate the whole process and help her grow and also, you know, take some tasks off my list. Uh, so you can use it to stay in touch with your loved ones, even if you're too busy to do so. And you can use it in a lot of creative and interesting ways. So let's see how it looks like. And also, towards the end of the video, I will uh, tell you the coordinates of uh, location from where you can get your own app and try it out. Uh, and in this video, we'll learn how to create one app for yourself. So let's get started. Something like this. So this is the automate WhatsApp chat app that we have created. Type the name of the person you want to automate the chat for and set it. Now let's go to WhatsApp. Ready to see the magic? There you go. All the chats are being typed and sent to the person automatically. This is what we are going to design in this video. So let's get started and dig into the details. Shut up, Shut up and, and sit, sit down. down. So how does this work? In order to understand that, let's understand the accessibility service first. Accessibility service is a feature in Android and it helps in several different things. One of the things is Google Talk. You know, whatever comes in the screen, it reads it out. It basically helps the people with special needs. So accessibility services helps the people to use the mobile. So that's the added feature. But how are we using it here? In order to understand, let's understand how the service works. In Android, whichever app has the accessibility permission runs as a service in background. And whichever app, suppose this is the app which will read the text on a screen for you. Okay, this is the Google Talk app, let's assume. And there is another app, which is a browser app. We want to read the text of this browser. So what happens is that whenever the browser app comes in foreground, the service which is sitting in the back end, you know, as our GTalk app, it knows nothing about what is happening in the foreground. Like it has no clue. So what does it do? It uses the accessibility feature of Android. This whole page view is converted into a tree format with notes. For starters, you can make the analog use the HTML document. So something like that. And every node has some ID, some value, depending on the node type, whether it's a text node, whether it's a node which is storing an image, or so on. So this tree then gets passed to the service. And the service navigates the tree and speaks out the content to you. Now we are using the same accessibility logic in our app to design this automation for Android. So let's get started with the code. As we just saw, the app looks like this. This is the basic app. This needs a permission, which is the accessibility permission. So you go to the settings and give it the required permission. And then come back to the app and you type the name of the person and select set, click on set button and then go to WhatsApp. and the automated charts will start happening. So this is how this works. So how is the, what, what is the code of the app? Let's try to understand that. Now this is the basic code of the app. 
in order to write a code like this for your own self, you would need to refer this documentation provided by Android. So accessibility service is basically a very detailed service with a lot of configuration options available. So it allows you to do a lot of things. It allows you to retrieve the window content. It allows you to listen to a different type of events, right? So whether uh, the user has clicked something or whether a new app has opened or whether you know the content is just scrolled or stuff like that so it has event types for all of these different kind of things that a person can um, do while interacting with the phone right and then the feedback type so once you have this input in what way do you want to tell the person uh, just like for example in google talk the feedback type is audible you know the service reads the text and then speaks it out the user so there are different kind of feedback types as well so there are different accessibility events there are different feedback types do take some time and just check out this document for more details on what all you can do one interesting thing about accessibility though is that it's not just uh, that you can read and passively do things accessibility services is also powerful to perform actions on behalf of user and that is exactly what we are doing in this hack so let's switch to our code. So the code is pretty basic with two files. One is the main activity file, which uh, is responsible and linked to the view. And the other one is the chat accessibility service, which has the main accessibility service code running in. Please note that we do need to declare it as a service. So we need to bind the accessibility service. So you need to define a service class and then this service also needs one XML file to operate on. So you need to define this XML accessibility service config XML as a resource. So let's go where it is defined in this source code. So this is how a very basic accessibility service uh, XML file, XML configuration file looks like. Packages name is basically all the packages that it's listening to. So for in our case, we're just listening to WhatsApp. The package name of that is combat WhatsApp. So we have placed it here. If you want to listen to multiple apps, you need to add the packages, package names for all of those apps. And this can also be set up dynamically. Then there is accessibility event types. What kind of events do we want to listen to? So for this case, we are just listening to window state changed, window content changed. So these are the events which happen when say an app has come into foreground or the state of the window of the app has changed or something new has come up on the screen. And then these are the accessibility flags which, are we, which we are using, the feedback type, which is generic for now, the notification timeout. A notification timeout a basically helps you regulate how frequently you want to listen to these events. So just imagine or when you are trying to get current state of what's in the foreground, it will be a lot of events, right? And if it is like coming to you at a very rapid pace that your processor or your background logic is unable to handle, then it's a good way to use this notification timeout to kind of regulate that window of how often do you want to get accessibility events. And then there are some other pieces. So this is how the basic accessibility service config looks like, which we have linked to in the Android manifest file. So once this is done, there's just one more activity, which is the main activity. Um, we have defined the layout and everything here, which is kind of how it works in Android. Um, we can maybe take another video on how to design your own Android app for those who are not familiar. But for now, we won't be diving much into how to design this and how do you link it with the activities and make it work. So let's jump to the main activity which is just responsible to what, what will happen if a particular button is clicked. Um, and then the core logic resides in chat's accessibility service, which extends accessibility service provided by Android. All right, so you import it, you extend it, and then there you go. So this is a basic list of conversations that I want to automate. Uh, you can be creative and add different kind of dialogues in here. Um, and then these three things are really interesting. Now, what are these exactly and where do I get it from? So this is basically name reference ID. So if you look at the app, okay, let's just look at the app. How does it look? If you see, we are kind of reading information. 
right? Like we need to know that it is the same person to whom the whom to send the message, right? Like you do not want to send a message to someone else. So um, like here when I set the person name, I basically make sure that whenever that person's chat is open, only then I send the message, okay? So that is what is happening. So here, the first thing that it does on this particular screen is check this name on the top here, all right? Let me turn it off, otherwise the person will receive a lot of messages and I'll get a good uh, call after that. So uh, yeah, so let's jump to the WhatsApp thing. So whatever you're trying to automate, try to get an understanding of what all it is made up of. So here you see that there's name in here and then there is this edit text and then, then uh, whenever I type something here, the send button comes in. So my main logic is to get this value, name value, and see that it is the same name as of the person that I want to send the message to. And then I find this edit text um, ID, and then I basically type the text there. How do we do that? Use a seat. And then I find where is the send button, and then I click it. So note that we can perform actions, but where to take the actions? That information as a service we do not know. So we will be getting it from the events. That, that we are getting, right? So whenever we configure our accessibility service, we are subscribing to a lot of events. So we'll be getting all three nodes for, for all of this. Um, and then we'll be trying to find out where is the name and where is the edit text and then do certain things. All right, so coming back. So these are basically the IDs. So this is the ID of the, um, what do you say, the UI component, which holds your name, conversation contact name. This is provided by WhatsApp encoded in WhatsApp app. Then this is the send button reference ID and this is the chat box reference ID. Exactly the kind of things that we need. Okay. And then uh, this is the function which is again provided. Uh, we extended the service number. So it's a part of this and we need to implement it here. So on accessibility event, what do we do? So basically what I'm trying to do here is just get the node which has this ID. So I try to figure out the text box. The first thing though is to figure out whether this is the same name or not. So see, I have a target name here, which I have picked up from uh, whenever you interact, whenever you click the set button, I set this target name. So this is John Doe in our case. And if name is not equal to target, we do not do anything. We just return, okay? But if it is, then it's time to perform some magic. So we get the text box where um, we need to type the text. We type the text by using perform action. This is the main thing, folks. We perform the action, we type the text. And what to set, that is defined in arguments, which is a bundle object. So once we are done with typing, another thing is to send the button. So we send the button by, again, traversing the node, uh, traversing the tree to get the node with send button reference ID and once we have it we again perform action. So perform action is the method which is enabling us to take actions on behalf of user and then we click. And to make it re realistic because you know this was really fast and we would not want this to be this fast because first of all it doesn't feel realistic I mean a human cannot type that fast and secondly WhatsApp will definitely you know it WhatsApp might blacklist or blacklist you for that. So uh, that is it. So let's just um, put 2.5 seconds, right? Like this sounds okay. And then that's it. There are some other reality kind of methods to help you with that, but that's pretty much it, folks. So that's all, folks. Try it out. Write down your own app. And if you want to try it out, the app directly go to my website aditi.fii slash latest hack and the whole app is uploaded there all you need to do is click on get free app and fill in the detail basically your email id in this form and do share and tweet uh, this this page and this uh, app details and once you have done, submitted it we'll send all the details along with the app to your inbox directly so that's all about it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll give it a try and come up with more creative hacks based on accessibility services in Android. I'll see you in the next video soon. 
Take care. Thank you for watching and do like it and subscribe the channel for more such hacks. Share it with your friends and try it out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.